Hello and welcome to ATP Report. It's the Katie and Barry show. All the way from, get this, Washington, D.C., we have very exciting news. Katie has flown into the United States, has been to D.C., where she is now, and we have inside information. Katie, so happy to have you on today and hear the news. Thank you very much. And I think that's one of the things we try and do here at ATP is tell truths straight from the road. And that's exactly what I'm doing here in DC. Okay. In a nutshell, what the hell happened a couple days ago <laughs> on January 6th? It's a great question, Barry. And honestly, it is nothing like what the media are portraying. My understanding from speaking to people who were there, from being here, from all of the events that happened, there were two separate events that happened. Number one, there was a huge MAGA rally that happened uh, down from the Lincoln Memorial to the Washington Monument. Massive gathering of people. People estimate 500,000 people. And it's everything I've ever known a MAGA rally to be. Joyful, helpful, children, old people, young people, a sort of festival of celebration, uh, thanking police officers. I was given the specific example, Barry. There was a police bike uh, that happened to be in the middle of the crowd eventually, no police officer on it. And our lot, the MAGA team, were all around, walking carefully around that bike, making sure no one damaged it, moved it, hurt it, you know, just respectful, orderly, uh, wanting to be together, the very best of our family. Separate to that, and ahead wait, wait, of that. So, wait a minute. So the bike wasn't picked up and thrown through the window of a department store that could be looted? Nothing. No, nothing. No rioting, no looting, no nothing. Safe, family, environment, lovely. No litter the next morning. Separate to that, Barry, and two hours ahead of that. So ahead of the rest of the people that were eventually going to walk up towards the Capitol building, there was a break in the incident that happened at the Capitol building that was two hours ahead of the 500,000 people who were much, much further back. So it was a separate incident. Now, who was involved in that? I don't know, bad actors, Antifa, some of our side that were overexcited. I know there was certainly a breaking in, but then once the pathway was open, I know a lot of people that were there probably with the MAGA rally also joined in. You saw them on the balconies waving their flags. One of them I'm told was given a bullhorn by the police to help explain why they were standing there. So a sense of two very separate things, but of course the media is pushing it as if what happened at the Capitol was representative of the good people that we know that peacefully protested or peacefully joined in celebrating Trump and then went home because then the curfew kicked in, the events for the afternoon were pulled. And we will kick to in a minute, Barry, an audio of a gentleman I met at the Lincoln Memorial next morning who very clearly states, that stuff I saw on TV, that was not the rally I went to. I don't recognize any of that. Well, before we get to that, and, and I need to agree with you on what you said so far, Katie, I've spoken to and received messages from probably half a dozen people that were there who I personally know, uh, journalists, activists, moms and dads, like you said, who brought their kids. Um, and everybody said, it was maybe one of the biggest crowds in the history of the nation to assemble in Washington, D.C., orderly, peaceful, happy, considerate, and polite. And I might also add, a number of sources have told me that the barricades that were erected around the Capitol building were opened up by the Capitol Police who let the crowds in. Have you heard that? Yes, I've heard exactly that, that the police were very much trying to assist with the movement of people, that the police inside in that initial phase were very helpful. And I've also, you know, should remind people, it is very cold here in DC. Nothing is open, restaurants, bars, nothing, no bathrooms, nothing. And these people they're from Missouri, from wherever, flew in because they wanted to be part of something special. 
They wanted to also make a stand for democracy, for what is right. They're there not because they hate America, but because they love it. And the notion that they would in any way want to damage anything is completely, it's an anathema to our side because we, we I'm a foreigner and an outsider, love the country, but that's why they were there. So, so a very different story. And, and one barrier, of course, that we are not hearing anywhere. My question is, where were those patriots being interviewed by the mainstream media? Not one interview with a patriot who said, I'm here with my children because I love this country. Where were those voices? Why were they screened out? Well, that's an hour and a half show about what's happened to media in this country. Mm -hmm. But there's a tremendous amount of evidence coming out now that certain people that were photographed in the Capitol building, breaking into offices and creating looting um, are professional agitators that have been photographed at various Antifa rallies around the country. Mm, absolutely. There's these bad actors. There's also some very curious things going on with a photographer that was inside before that riotous mob arrived, whomever they are, and the photographer was strategically paced and those photos were straight up on Getty for purchase immediately after the events, almost as if the photographer was there prepared to create that kind of symbiotic relationship with the people he was there to feed. And all of it, Barry, is entirely foreign to people who were at a happy rally. And all of it, Barry, seems determined and destined to try and kill dead the MAGA movement, to absolutely eradicate it from existence. And guess what? They've done a pretty damn good job in the last 48 hours, if you ask me. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and, it, and it's an emotional thing. There's been a lot of tears amongst our kind of peers or colleagues here. And certainly a sense for me, a real you know, passion I have now of, of helping our side when we've had a little bit of time, uh, let's avoid the inauguration day, but we then need to think about how we take this forward. That will be the next step. We are a movement and we don't get stopped. But at the moment, it certainly feels like the forces of evil coalesced in order to try and terminate MAGA forever. And I think, uh, you mean you're the constitutional expert, but I think that's why they're pushing so hard for the 25th. Yeah, we can, we're gonna talk about that in another segment. Tell me about your discussion uh, with one of my favorite congressmen, Louis Gohmert uh, from Texas. You went in and actually met with him. Give us some highlights. I mean, first up, so I'm going to be meeting with Louis. That would all be very normal. But now, of course, DC has been put into curfew. The National Guard have arrived. The mayor here has called for another 200 uh, National Guard individuals. Barriers are going up, barricades. All of a sudden, it's problematic to get into the building, get into Louis's office. And I didn't know it was coming. I must have been holding it in somewhere. I saw Louis broke into tears because it was like being with, you know, A, a family member and B, someone I'm so so grateful for. In our last segment, Barry, we were talking about how Goma was making kind of a last stand uh, and an emotional time for all of us. Uh, but he is very, very clear on something I think is important to share. Uh, Goma makes ribs, spare ribs. He cooks them in his congressional office for the Capitol Police and he goes out with them on a tray. He went out to the Capitol Police the night before the mega rally, the night before and he said to them, well, guys, I suppose at least, you know, it's MAGA people coming, da, 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 da. And they said, we have just had a briefing to say that it is not just MAGA, that there is Antifa who have infiltrated and they're coming dressed as Trump supporters. He knew that and he went on to do media the next day explaining that that had happened. Uh, and he feels a sense of crushing guilt that he didn't help make that heard more clearly before the events that unfolded later in the day. But this idea of guilt, I think it's something carried by our side because we all wish this had gone a different way. <laughs> That's putting it mildly. You also got in with uh, the Marjorie Georgia- Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah, yeah. From Georgia. What'd you, what did you call her, Trump in heels? <laughs> <laughs> she is fantastic. She is a little pocket rocket dynamo. Uh, anybody that knows Marjorie Taylor Greene will feel nothing but warmth for her. And if I, um, I'm going to use this remote control to explain, you know, if this is a, a spectrum of a regular politician, 
uh, who is like climbing the greasy pole and it's all about their career. And then this is grassroots. You know, Trump always sat over here with grassroots, right? He was never a politician. He always understood the people. Marjorie Taylor Greene is way over here. She could be someone from the rally. She could be the mum with three kids and a red hat on. She was in her blue jeans in the office. She's that lady. And, and her, her speaking to her one-on-one, -on -one, uh, they plucked me off actually when they saw me outside waiting for Louie. Um, so we have support from her office and I was offering our thanks for everything she's done. And she is very clear now that her and a handful of others, we can think of the names, are absolutely number one targets for whatever's going to happen to them, you know, insurrection, whatever. They're going after Marjorie. This was her third day in office. She made that bold stand of standing with MAGA and Trump, and they are coming after her hard and others, as you've seen. Oh, absolutely they are. So what's next? This has been something that I've never seen in my life, nor have any other Americans, or in your case, a Brit looking over the fence. What's next for America? How do we heal from this? Mm. I think a few things, having had time to think of this, because there were some dark and despondent moments in the previous 24, 48 hours. But number one, it seems to me as an outsider that the inauguration is a non-event. They're probably going to wheel him out onto the West Wing. He'll stand there and wave at two or three people. There's not going to be crowds gathering because it simply won't happen. And when were there ever crowds for Biden? And now the, the Capitol building is also completely fenced off between eight foot high fencing, which it's never been in the time that I've known it. I believe our side is best placed to completely uh, ignore the inauguration. I think doing something else, doing something you love, doing something that makes you happy, anything but talk about it. No one's going to be there. An old man who I believe fraudulently took this election is going to get inaugurated. We should not dignify it with our attention. That would be my number one. And number two, it's time for us to pull back, get our house in order. The states, red states need to be tough and strengthened, and we can come again from a position of strength. And uh, as my academy sergeant major used to say at the uh, at Sandhurst in the army, you know, it's all about personal discipline. The reason they beast you in the army and virtually torture you is so that when it all goes wrong, you still maintain personal discipline. And so that's what I think we'll do is pull back to states, make red states redder, remind ourselves of the discipline we need, and then we can come again. But clearly that's a process and it's not something that's gonna happen overnight. And if you listen to the media, Obviously, they're still really pushing the doom and gloom and that all MAGA equals bad. So all I'm hearing 24-7 and on media sources, I never mm -hmm. thought would report it that way. Thanks, mm -hmm. Katie. And thank you for joining us today on ATP Report. Special thanks for Katie for flying all the way from the UK to Washington to be there on the ground for us. You're terrific, Katie, and we sure appreciate you. Thank you, Barry. For those of you that haven't subscribed, please do so by taking out your cell phone. Text the word TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, and send it to 88202. 88202, push send. You'll be automatically subscribed for free to get all of our text message alerts and all of our content on your cell phone absolutely free. Or you can go to americantruthproject.org, sign up there, always free, and you'll get a free copy of the first few chapters of my new book, Because You Asked. For Katie and for me, Barry Newsbaum, thanks for joining us.